And there we are. Welcome to another episode of Exotica TV. I am your host, Jay, with my beautiful co-host, Dan. Hey, Dan. Hello, hey, Dan. beautiful Jay. <laughs> no, it's beautiful you're Dan. Looking dapper today too. Uh, thank but you're you. looking dapper as well. Uh, I, I withstood my first uh, quarantine haircut yesterday. So it's, um, you know... It's it's okay. We're, I'm, my wife and I are still married after it. It took it was questionable for a second or two, but uh, in the end, I forgave her for what she did to me, and we're just going to move past it. So, divorce lawyers are going to make out like crazy when this oh. shit's done. Listen, yeah, drive by divorces. It's it's gonna it's gonna come soon. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> stop, drop, and roll. Today we have. Uh, a, an awesome series that we've called Spotlight. And I, I like this one. This is kind of one of my personal favorites because we get to have folks on the show that have uh, stars that have participated throughout the years um, and still are participating. Um, it's, you know, kind of an opportunity for everybody at home to go one on one, for lack of a better term, with some of the biggest stars in the industry. And, uh, you know, so the, this is, you know, always a pleasure. And Dan, you're way better at introducing people than I am. So, you know, I, I would hand it off to you. Oh, gee, thanks. All <laughs> right. Well, um, this next guest, let's see. <clears throat> Clear my throat here. He was smoking weed. The, um, yeah, right. <laughs> the uh, We first met her, what year was it, Jay? Uh, did she start doing the events? Maybe around 2012 or so, 13. Which also 2012, she was the AVN uh, female performer of the year, I believe. She was like and, the everything uh, of the year back then. It was crazy. She's like porn's true renaissance woman. Uh, singer, actress, uh, business entrepreneur, uh, artist, uh, all around musician. And now she's uh, adding professional dom to her repertoire and uh we're actually really excited because she is also back with the show this year she will be our official hostess slash uh dungeon mistress uh please welcome madam skin diamond hello skin. Yeah. what's up Thanks for having me what's happening oh please i mean you're like obviously one of our favorites that's ever been involved with the show i mean we've done your we were jay and i were watching he's i don't think we could show this on here um <laughs> you know facebook or you know uh periscope might have a severe problem with it but it was like one of your performances uh, the cat the kitty performance from the show uh, that you did on our main stage one of my all-time favorites show. that yeah. was a very raunchy show i'm surprised i got away with that I'm, I'm surprised that I found videos hosted on YouTube of it because it was it was pretty wild. Well, I, I literally take and then put back a butt plug, a giant butt plug on stage to the music. Oh, so so oh, we, we didn't know that part. I think at the time I think at the time we said it was a fake butt plug. Well, it start okay, so it started off um, I started la, la, doing la, la, the la, stock la. room and we, it didn't start off with the butt plug. It was, I was just going to be a kitty and I had a butt plug tail, but I wasn't like doing anything with it on stage. Um, but then, you know, this show got bigger and bigger and I wanted to make it really cool, but it was because of the outfit. So the outfit, I, to be able to take the leotard off, I had to take the butt plug, which was go, it was latex. <laughs> going through a little hole through the latex into my ass. So I had to take that out, take the leotard off, and then put the butt plug back in. So it was a whole thing. <laughs> but oh, I did so it obviously. very sneakily, so it wasn't like obvious what I was doing. But if you knew, you know what was going on. Well, now we do. <laughs> and there yeah. you know. well, I'm, I'm, I really thought you already knew that. <laughs> I, 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 may have, I may have heard that before, but uh, I'll, I'll plead what the What does Anthony Fauci said? Well, we don't know. We don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So, it, is a, it is a surprise. It is a surprise. Um, so, that was a great show. It was so much fun. And we were just talking before. Like, this, the show is just so much, you know, it's just grown so much. And you were there kind of, like, you know, kind of in its little adolescent years, I guess. And now the New Jersey show, uh, especially, has really grown. And, 
you know, look, Chicago, it's, you know, we're lamenting again. Uh, next I week know. would have been our original date of uh, Exotica Chicago for the 10th year, believe it or not. But, I mean, yeah, it was our 10th anniversary. We'll be back there in um, it will be first again. week of August. Yeah. Yeah, so we're psyched. But, I mean, yeah, we're, we're super stoked to have you back on board. And you've been up to a ton of shit um, since you were last at the show. Uh, like, yeah, one thing is I know that, you know, you're super proud of and as really cool as your music career. Yeah. Um, I've been pretty busy. I mean, I, I kind of dipped out of adult kind of abruptly. I was going like, to say, it was kind of sad to see you go <laughs> for a minute. I'm glad to see you back. I, I wasn't, um, I, it wasn't even really like fully planned. Like I, I basically just was so like, I needed to refine myself, you know? And I felt that over the years in porn, I was a I I was given the opportunity to explore a lot of my sexuality, but over the years, you know, when you make something like this your job, after a while, like you know, lines get blurred, and I felt like I wasn't living for my sexuality as much as I was living for everybody else's desires of me, which is great. You know, I want to give back to my fans, and I want us to have a mutual awesome time but I felt like I needed to kind of take a step back and rediscover who I was as a person and sexually and I use music actually to do that um, because it's something that I've always loved doing I've always loved to sing um, I've always liked writing silly songs um, I'm definitely a storyteller so I like to I love I've been writing since I was four since I could since I could write and writing stories. So that was kind of like a no brainer. And it was, it's been very therapeutic and very amazing, you know, getting to explore a whole new side of myself. And in that, it, um, it made me really come home to the fact that I'm a lot more dominant than I thought I was. I, I came into the industry just thinking I was submissive. And you know, it was cool. To, to do stuff, but I, I like, you know, it's, it's easier to just lie back and, and, and be a doll sometimes, but there's a responsibility to being in control that I think I haven't found yet in myself. And then once I really started digging deep, that was when I like started exploring the dominant side of me in my personal life, not just on camera or, um, you know, just like little random things. Like I wanted to take it really seriously. But and serious yeah. you have. So healing. So I, I actually just started rolling the uh, the Wet Dreams music video as you've been talking, and uh, it's oh. it's really awesome to see. I mean, obviously, all of your different uh, influences through this stuff, and I mean, it, it's the nice thing. Once you started doing music, or started kind of stepping away from adult and going into music, is that you're still hot as hell in the music videos. Like everything, everything that you do just has this like air of like sexuality to it that is pretty wild well this song is called wet dreams so it's definitely so go figure yeah it kind of makes sense um, that one was really fun to write that's why it's really it's, um, that's when it's really hot in your room when you start sweating right yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i wrote that with a producer friend of mine named zukong um and it was it was one of the earlier songs that i when i really started finding my 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 style my writing style so that one's really i really like that one it's special and the music video is hot and jenna sativa's in it she's my queen girl nice. so. so have you always been in music have you always written do you play instruments i do i mean i've always been a singer okay. um i my dad is a singer as well so i kind of grew up just singing all the time you know we listened to music i was a big michael jackson fan growing up so, uh, <laughs> so singing has always been very ingrained in me. Um, and your dad was an actor, right? As well? Yeah, yeah. My dad was an actor as well. So, I, like being on being a performer has always been very appealing to me because it's fun. You basically just, you know, get That's, to play. It's in the genes, right? No. So, it's, it's sure. <laughs> so, so yeah. Who are your influences? Like, like we're both like Jay and I are both like huge music guys, and actually you know, have music backgrounds and stuff like that, industry backgrounds. Like, who were your influences growing up? Hmm, big influences. I listened to a lot of, well, Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey, um, Earth, Wind & Fire, James Brown, 
um, Stevie Wonder, a lot of like funk and soul, um, blues like Billie Holiday has been one of my favorites since I was really little. Uh, so yeah, and then Amy Winehouse is a more recent influence. Well, I watched, I, I saw your uh, Amy Winehouse uh, cover on your YouTube channel. It was awesome. Oh, thank you. So, so, a fun story about that is I actually got to meet the writer who wrote that song because he saw my cover and we have a mutual friend. So so that was really cool. I was like, well, I'll never get to meet Amy, but that's like really close to it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I love, I love that. I, the stuff that I'm working on now though is so different than anything, How which so? is why I've been very quiet about it. Cause I don't want to give anything away until it's completely so you, done. So, you can't, you can't say anything about it. <laughs> but it's really, it's, I, I've, I've found my voice. I feel like I've found my voice and I'm just waiting to unleash it at this point. So how old were you when you got in, first got into the adult business? I was 23. Okay. So have, how has, I mean, obviously like 23 to 33 is like a million years, right? Does it feel like forever? Or does it feel like a heartbeat? <laughs> It, I mean, it feels like it was just yesterday, but it also feels like you said, like it's a lifetime, especially in terms of adult 10 years is, ah, damn, 10 years. 10 years That's doesn't, a long time. yeah, no, I mean, yeah, Jay, Jay's really bad at math. It's 10, not a million. <laughs> does it feel like a million years? I said, it so, does feel like a million years. And, well, I was a stripper and a model before I was doing hardcore adult as well. So, um, it's actually been a little bit longer than that. So I have, a, I have a fun skin diamond story, um, which goes all the way back to like probably the 22, 23 year old days versus, versus today. We first saw our skin first came on our Exotica radar through Burning Angel. And it was when um, Joanna and had, you know, a, a bunch of girls and was doing every show. And she sent over a, uh, an email, you know, with a list of who she had appearing at the show. And I saw your name and I was like, oh, I've never, I, who, who is this person? So I clicked through and literally you had like one photo set, two photo sets, you know, of like stuff that we could actually see. And uh, it very rarely, and it's probably happened Dan, what, three or four, maybe five times over the 14 years that we've done the show that you see those photos and you're just like, there you go. Like, I mean, that that's going to be a person and a name that we know for a really long time. And, you know, not to like, you know, toot our own horn or at least mine, but uh, we definitely, the second, <laughs> the second that we saw that photo shoot you know, or the couple of photo shoots were like, yep, the skin diamond girl, she, she's going to yeah. be here for a long time. That's and, then you, and you took off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, was, it was crazy. I really wasn't even expecting it, honestly. I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm being slutty and might as well get paid. And then it ended up being very, very good for me. So awesome. it was very unexpected. Definitely wasn't ex and wasn't planning it. And we've and seen, <laughs> you know, the, the progression of your career. And it's always what's really fun now is to have you back, you know, to have you back doing our uh, our dungeon experience, which has grown exponentially in the last, you know, four or five years. Um, and and to you're, you've come back in such a different way. You kind of like reinvented yourself as you've gone. And so when did the when did the Madam Skin come about? Like, wh where did you find that? Well, that was kind of interesting. It's a little bit of a long story. I mean, I've... We got time. Uh, we're all locked I've, inside. <laughs> yeah, we're all... We've all got time. <laughs> um, well, I've been th thinking about doming professionally, like, as in doing sessions outside of adult movies for many years. Um, I've been asked about it. And it just kind of wasn't the right timing, I guess. But it all kind of ties into this art project that I'm also doing. So um, a few years ago, I discovered this, um, this goddess, this ancient Sumerian goddess called Inanna, who is the oldest uh, female deity that we have in recorded history. So she's kind of like the OG, okay. the original mm -hmm. goddess. And I, I, so I, I discovered, ah. I, had, I had like a crazy dream. I like did some research and then 
And then this Anana came up and I just went like, I just went nuts. And I started reading about this goddess of love and chaos. She's, um, and she was all often depicted as a dominatrix. She'll be holding a whip. She has her leg on a lion. She's often depicted riding lions. Like she's this badass, sexual, like fucking, you know, badass. Right. And I, I did a lot of research and that was kind of like, the the kick that I needed to be like, all right, you should just do it. You know what? I feel like this is a sign. You should just you should just do it. And 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 I reached out to a dear um, friend of mine who was uh, my first mistress when I first moved to LA, and I was Kitty. And I I reached out to her, and um, you know asked her for some advice. Uh, she ended up becoming my mentor, Domina Angelina. She's, uh, you know, very renowned, been in the business for many, many years, um, like over 30 years. So I reached out to her. I also reached out to Isabel Sinclair, who I did the first kitty show with yep. for Exotica. Um, and she's been a great, um, a great teacher for me. So I started, you know, I wanted to traditionally learn. I didn't yeah. want to just... Yeah say I was a dom and then just start at like advertising. Like it was a long time before I even really started advertising that I was doming because I wanted to make sure that I was training safely and traditionally in a way that is respectful for the craft. Yep. Um, and you know, and being a, a professional dominant is a lot of responsibility. You know, there's a there's things that can go wrong that you have to handle, and it's not like being on a porn set where there's a whole crew with you, and you know, if something goes wrong, there's like you know, a lot of the times when you're working in the realm of professional dominance, it's just two people in the room or whatever. So you you really have to know what you're doing, and there's a skill to it, especially if you want to have specific skills like if you want to delve into medical play then that's a whole thing that you should really have med professional medical training for like sure at least at least minor first aid skills um you know <laughs> impact play you can really you can really fuck up someone you can make them piss blood if you hit their kidneys so like there's there's a lot of skill and a lot of respect that should be shown. Um, so and that's, I, I, that's one of the things that, that really blew our minds when we started putting together the Exotica Dungeon experience. It, it, and, and one of the main reasons why we have a crew that travels with us every city that basically understands, you know, the, the safety protocols in place have been vetted, are able to like, you know, identify where, you know, who needs to be where, what needs to be covered, you know, all the consent issues that you have with everything. I mean, it's, it is wild. It's, it's, you know, one of those things that the deeper you dig into it, the deeper it goes, you know, it's how That's big now so <laughs> it's, you can you never reach the end every day. Right. Well, how big is it now, Jay? How many square feet is it? I think it's like 5,000 square feet. Uh, it's it's a big space. It's a monster. And, you know, we have all sorts of stuff. For, and for those who haven't come to the show yet or a show yet, and, you know, when we get going again here, you know, Skin will be there doing some, uh, you know, appearances and instruction and seminars and stuff uh, within the area demos. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's a 5,000 plus, I think, even square foot area now with yeah. – um, Saying what is it? Saint Andrew's Cross or Saint Mark's Cross? Oh, we Saint Andrew's Cross. We have we have a, a basic Sorry. a tractor trailer truck full of all of our own custom metal equipment that goes you know city to city. Um, I mean it's it's gone from literally we have a cage that we rigged that we've rigged to the ceiling and use a winch to pull it up and like people can ride up in the thing and go down. We have spinning wheels and wheels of death and rigging puppy points cages. And puppy cages. Yeah, Sounds it's, it, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gonna have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just got in a, a new neon a neon wand kit too, so oh, I'm nice. bringing that as so, well. One of the, one of the amazing things of when when I saw actually I think I first saw you pop up on Instagram. That was when when Madam Skin came out and was oh. like I, I had followed you and and then I saw this come out and it was like. Oh man, like if there was one person that we needed to get involved with what we do, it, it's 
you do an amazing job at your production level of everything you do. And I've said it to you personally, it's, you know, it's really awesome to be able to say, Hey, like, you know, send us over these photos or what, what do you have? What can we do promo wise? And skin always has like the a number one top of the line. And I've been putting some of your, your different promo photos up as we go. Um, you know, her shit is just, it's killer. Thank he you. calls it, he calls it follow by the way. I call it stock, but it's a little thin. <laughs> it's a thin little line there, but, <sighs> you nah, know. but I mean, Stalkers these days with the internet. <laughs> yeah, spe- speak, speaking of these days, uh, you know, like what are you up to? Like since this whole, you know, stay at home order came about, what, how you been keeping busy? Well, that's been really fun actually. So, um, I mean, a few months ago, well, it was probably about six months ago. I decided to start experimenting with, premium Snapchat and like kind of delving into like giving people a glimpse of my sessions, my slaves, you know, I, uh, that, that kind of thing. But, um, more recently, um, and this actually ties into the Anana project that I was talking to you about earlier. So my partner, um, we actually connected through this Anana obsession as well. He's an artist, he's a a visionary photographer, um, and he had this idea to do this shoot about Inanna with snakes. And I was like, "Um, why would you, you're asking me this? Of course I want to do that. Snakes and Inanna, yes, I'm sold. I didn't, I like barely glanced at his work, even though his work is fucking insanely amazing. I just glanced at it, was like, I know I wanna do this. We ended up um, hanging out, we had a meeting to discuss the photo shoot. We fucked all night. Um, It was actually the first time I had um, really allowed someone to dominate me or even get in there for a long time because I was, you know, feeling after porn, like with all of this shit that I was going through, I honestly turned a little asexual for a little while. It was kind of scary. I like completely lost terrifying. all of my, you know, it was terrifying. I, lo- I lost all desire. It was scary as shit because I've always been such a scary uh, sexual person this very ingrained in my identity so to kind of feel like I lost that part of myself um it was very unnerving I went into depression and all this stuff um fast track later I meet this person who I haven't connected sexually with someone in so long and this person just came into my life and I was like holy shit that's what an orgasm is oh I remember Okay, our third date, we like fucked so loud, his neighbor hates us now. He was water dunking me and I choked me out and I squirted everywhere. I came to the squirting. It was incredible. It was like, hands down, some of the best sex I've ever had in my life. And that is saying something. (laughs) That was saying a lot. And, you know, so obviously, this, this person, his name is Diederik, I was like, we just started having these crazy sexual experiences, bringing girls in, filming everything. And then it got to a point where I was scrolling through my phone, which is very not safe for work at this point. I'm scrolling through my phone. I'm like, people would like to see this. (laughs) So why don't we just start posting all of our like private home movies? And, you know, we can do some professional stuff too. Like, you know, we'd love to create we definitely have like bigger production stuff in mind but i really enjoy displaying our like just regular like a lot of it you know sometimes i'm not wearing any makeup even it's just like it's very just real us being our depraved sexual <laughs> self so on that note i have uh, created an only fans <laughs> <laughs> for your viewing pleasure. greatest lead-in ever <laughs> And you know, yeah, it's only fans, uh, skin diamond, right? Yes, skin diamond. So we have- but, uh, it's really exciting. I haven't, I haven't posted anything like this in several years. It's been a minute since anyone's seen me in these kind of, uh, situations. And, and how's so, the and reception been like so now that you're kind of getting back in the swing of things, like is, how do you feel? Does it, what's different compared to what it was when you kind of slipped away into the night? <laughs> 
Well, because I've also been on this journey into my dominant role, mm -hmm. it's given me um, <clears throat> the the confidence and the 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 assuredness to just you know really take control of my sexuality. And with my partner, don't get me wrong, I'm very submissive sexually to my partner, but in life we're we're equals, right. you know, yeah. um, which. Um, you know, and I'm dom I feel dominant with everybody else. Um, but it's like, it's nice to be able to go re-explore these parts of myself with more knowledge. And that makes it so much more fun because now it's a little less like just like doing random things to see what it feels like. Now I'm like, okay, I know what this feels like and I want to use this to get to this. And I know whether I like it or I don't, or you know, what, what works and what doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. That's how Dan it's feels about butt stuff. <laughs> it, it, it never fails skin. <laughs> Every show. I just wait for it. This is actually, Perfect. he wanted to say something. He had something prepped earlier, but you kind of cut him off. I can't remember what what time it was, which was good. And I'm like, oh, that was it. But now it's like, a, I think it's a record, Jay. You just had to wait. No, I mean, I, we made it 26 minutes and 51 seconds before. But you tried to say something earlier. But yeah, anyway. I did. I did. So I don't know. What what was it? Can you I, share with I, the audience? I don't even remember at this point. I think I've I've had like three digs since then. So. <laughs> no, that was the only one, actually. That's your first No, one. but I mean, like coming, I just didn't put them out uh, there. So... Um, <laughs> So yeah, we talked about anyway with that whole thing. So, <laughs> so anyway, have you, anyway, have you been like you know keeping tabs on the industry and stuff? Like you know where the industry's gone and your thoughts on it? are there are there any new stars that you know you say oh like you know that chick's really hot or you know I want to do this you know I want to work with this person or you know like you're like yeah you know, we we said like yeah you know, we've seen people so yeah I want to see get your take on it. Well, it's funny because I mean since I've been out I haven't really I mean I still keep in touch with a few people like I still keep in touch with Friends. speed right. my old agent of course um I still keep in touch with I've always kept in touch with Riley Reed um uh but um I actually did this music video recently with the Vixen team it was for G Yeezy's new music video for still be friends and um some of the girls on that set I was like oh Okay. I forget like all of their names right now, but I actually, or you could just watch the music video, and then all the, all those girls. Well, <laughs> and, and we also have the music video, the the Karma music video that uh, that actually I was playing now, and you were explaining that that's with with uh, adult star Vicky Chase. Yes, um, Vicky Chase and I up until recently were neighbors, and I had this idea for. Um, my karma music video and I knew right away that I didn't want to be karma because I thought it would be too cliche and weird so I was like I want to get like a really sultry amazing friend of mine so I asked Vicky I think she's the person I asked and she said yes and she's so cool. she's so hot in it. imagine being in like you're walking out of your condo front door and <laughs> I just I was just gonna say the same thing and being like, like okay, oh here. yeah there's there's my neighbor Vicky Chase and my other neighbor Skin Diamond <laughs> like who, who else lived in the building <laughs> <laughs> well this is what uh, in the downtown LA living life I was yeah, no, and it's different in the valley because I mean yeah the valley um, like for those who don't know I mean pretty much almost everybody lives in the valley very few people live downtown yeah. Um, you know, I know. I know. Obviously, you know, uh, Vicky lives there, and some other people that we know um, from the industry who we won't, you know, throw under the bus here. But <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's just like I mean, that's. It would be like what was it? Uh, Three is Company, that old show. Like, yeah. You know, the one. So you know, like somebody would just play the gay guy to like you know be in the same you know apartment with you and uh, Vicky. <laughs> I would, that would be a fun show. I, I I would think that you guys should demand like lower rent because you know that they're probably going to be charging more for the people surrounding you. Yeah. Well, they don't. Live there. You don't live there anymore, though, no. right? Now you're. No, you know. no. So are you are you hey. still out in Cali? Yeah, I'm still in Los Angeles, just not as like central LA as before. Um, but still not the Valley. I I can't do the Valley. I'm sorry. I love the Valley is fine, but not it's not for me. Hey, you were talking about it uh, when you, you know, with uh, you know, your art project, you do some stuff with snakes or whatever, and you have a snake, right? 
I have three snakes. Three? I actually just found one of them, so <laughs> I have. Wait, 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 wait. Hold have... on. How do you just find? How do you just find a snake? Well, like where was it? <clears throat> My first snake, whose name is Snake Severus Snake Snape. Um, he's a black and white striped king snake. And then I have two albino corn snakes as well. They're brother and sister. They're Lucius and Narcissa Malfoy. Because I can't really tell them apart when I first got them. So I was just like, they're the Malfoys. That's easy. So you're a big Harry Potter geek, too. I am a, I am a Harry Potter. Okay, geek. carry on. Go ahead. Continue with the snakes. Um, so a few months ago, Snape went missing because he's a, he's a little escape artist. Like, he just finds like he got out of his tank somehow he, he's like, got nothing wanted, better to do but find his way out of that thing fucking better to do so <laughs> he escaped and i couldn't find him he's quite small he's not like a giant boa or anything they're a little easier to find if they go missing because they're like the size of a cat or something rolled up but you know snape is tiny he, like rolls up into this tiny little ball and then i had to move i was moving out of this loft Months went by, I kept trying to lure him out. I moved, I had like all of my gardening equipment and stuff packed away in a box that I was taking to my new house that was finishing renovations. So I wasn't there yet. I just like left it, you know, and it was in the rain, whatever. And then I'm there the other day to pick up some stuff and we were kind of like reorganizing around like where the workers would like put they like put all of this stuff on top of my shit. So I was like, oh fuck, I need to like move this. And Diederik pulls up this strawberry planter and Snape is hanging out of the box. And I scream, cause I'm like, oh my God, I think he's dead. Diederik is like screaming cause he thinks that there's like a giant spider. <laughs> <laughs> and then um and then i look and i i'm expecting to find his dead body and he's fucking alive <laughs> five months so, so wait hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Am, am i the on. am i the only one that was envisioning like homeward bound to snape's version of like her getting to her house and then like all of a sudden her looking out her front window and snape like comes like you know he made like a 45 mile journey across like la to be able to get home it's like like say anything, he's holding up a boombox <laughs> outside her window, but like, here, and it's like he was in your old place. So imagine, like, all right, I got some bad news. There may or may not be a missing snake in this apartment, but the good news is Vicky Chase is your neighbor. <laughs> yeah. So if you find a snake, just let her know. Um, but um, it is crazy. Like I, I can't believe that he made it to the new house. That whole time we were moving him around and had no idea. Fucking snakes. That's, They're very resilient that, animals. They can go months without eating. As long as they have food, uh, water, they can go a really long time without food. As long as like temperatures aren't too cold or whatever, they'll yeah. just go, they'll just hibernate. And he was like safe in a box. So I'm very happy. We I, give him a nice little uh, pinky mouse for his trouble. Yeah. Oh yeah. He got, he got a good meal and I got him all his, his little tanks all set up. So what do you think he ate? He like, just immediately tried to escape as soon as I, as soon as he felt better. He's like, all that right. That snake can't be caged. <laughs> I, I lived in a house in college with a, a bunch of people and uh, somebody had dudes. A, a, dudes. It was, it was a fraternity house. I swear to God, I wasn't trying to say that, but it's true. Um, and one of the guys had a, a boa constrictor and it was like a pretty decent sized boa constrictor. And of course, you know, like everything in college, it went missing at a point and like same kind of deal. It was like an old Victorian house. You just expected like snake got in the wall or got somewhere and just, you know, is gone, you know? And, um, that spring, a couple of buddies of mine were out golfing and they went to pull their club out of the bag on the first hole and the snake was in the bottom of the golf bag. So they had carried it out of this house into the car, got out on the golf course was he alive? and he was alive and he was fine. He was chilling in the bottom of this golf bag. <laughs> what are you doing? Moving me. <laughs> Dude, <seriously. laughs> it's fine. Oh, snakes are um, such interesting animals. You, we got to do it, Jay. We got to do an Exotica TV, uh, just a special of you know porn stars and their pets, because between skin, let's see, Skin's got a snake, snakes, um, three snakes, snakes, so snakes. Uh, Katie Morgan and Evan Stone. They have a have, fucking well, zoo. Until recently, 
until recently they had a wallaby. The wallaby we just found out unfortunately passed away. Oh. But they got a pig. They got we did a thing with him. I'm sure you've seen Tiger King at yeah. this point. Yeah. Where it was uh, it was Evan was Joe Exotica. It was hysterical, but there's We're very high, and Is there a parody yeah. in the in the making? <laughs> there might be actually now. <laughs> Directly. I would be surprised. That'd be hilarious. Evan, Evan's basically play, played everything at this point, yeah. so I mean, why not? <laughs> totally see him in Tiger King too. <laughs> oh my god! It is, well, Jay, I, I don't know if you have a picture there you can throw up, but oh, you know, we'll actually, send it to you afterwards. But it was. And we had a, we just it was on April first, right? So the April Fool's joke, yeah, you know, we're gonna have Joe Exotica on, and, and people thought like they just didn't realize that we put an A on the end of it. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, there was somebody in the chat room because we did it live. There was somebody in the chat room, or not the chat room, but in on Twitter or Periscope <laughs> in the comments, who was there like, "How'd they get this guy out? He should be in jail. <laughs> he abused he abused tigers. You know, he should be in jail." And it's like, I don't, I don't think that the so, benchmark for viewers of uh, the Joe Joe Exotica or Joe Exotica is, is very high. So I don't, I don't think any of us should be surprised that somebody actually thought that that was the right guy. The best. <laughs> speaking of Joe Exotic, I mean. I'm watching the press conference uh, yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. Uh-uh. So somebody, a reporter, you know, was asking Trump. You know, they're asking their questions after his little, you know, everything's great, and you know, I'm the smartest man in the world. Um, speech. I, I love how you curl your lip at him, but, uh, but anyway, I just, I just sit there, and one of the reporter from the New York Post says, "Are you thinking of pardoning Joe Exotic?" And have you seen Tiger King? Because in today, in today's world, that's actually a real question. The, that's the fucked up thing about how yeah. the world that we're living in. Skin, do you do you watch the news? I I do. I mean, I keep up with it. I try not to watch too much. I just saw that the Library of Congress has included meme culture. They're starting to catalog all meme culture. So isn't that crazy? I, I mean, at least they're like staying on the cutting edge of it. I mean, that's like that's, that's a it's like every year when the. Uh, the what is it webster's dictionary adds like their their list of new words or whatever it's kind of yeah. yeah similar yeah i i've i've oh, gone to watching i i dvr the six o'clock news so for half an hour that's my news like i don't i i used to consume it constantly and at this point i'd rather just deal with was, joe exotica drive you crazy. <laughs> we, we'd be we'd be working and jay would just break out and we could just be talking about it or just be quiet. And be like, you know, I was just reading this that you know, the, the gross national project, uh, you know, the product of Denmark, just whatever the hell it was. It was just some stupid shit that he was throwing. I've in gone there. to the point now. I just like, don't even want to think about it anymore. I've, I've, yeah, I, 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 I'll cry. I'll just <laughs> sit there and cry. So, so I want to do. We're going to do a little something here to as we wind this uh, thing down here. Of just ask you some just quick little questions that people may or may not want to know about you. So, may so if not. we made a movie about, about your extraordinary life, what actress would you want to play you? Hmm. Well, just because I get this more than anything else, everyone says that I look like Jada Pinkett Smith. So probably her, I guess. I don't I see, see it fully, but I get I, I I swear I get that a lot. And the girl from fucking Clueless. Who uh de- Cher. Cher, the girl what that actress. Alicia Silverstone? No, 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 no not Cher, sorry. The other one. Stacy Dash? They're both named Stacey Dash. Stacey, No, you, Gabrielle you... Union, isn't it? Oh, not Gabrielle Union. They're didn't, her best friend. Didn't Stacy Stacy Dash turn into like a crazy like crackhead or something in real life and like fall apart? I didn't know. I don't know. I, 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 the one I'm trying to remember died. what happened to her. Um, Jay, squirrel here. Sorry, well, anyway. Jay, squirrel. <laughs> uh, do you have Do you have any hidden talents? Hidden talents. Hidden talents. Um, like something stupid you can do that. It, people would realize <laughs> um hidden talents she's like i've lived my life on a stage so at this point <laughs> like if you don't know the talents that i have then we should just stop this interview right now for I'm example sure. jay loves showing everybody how he can tie a cherry stem with his tongue and try and tantalize them with it yep that's so true 
I mean, I guess I'm good with plants. Is that a hidden talent? I'm. I love. I'm a plant. Oh, is it? She's I'm good with plants. With plants. She, you got a, you got a green thumb. I got a green thumb. Um, um, I'm trying to think of something more interesting than that, though. Uh, pull, I can make really high pitched squealing noises. <laughs> oh wait, we gotta hear. Like Ariana Grande style, like. All right, look, look, you gotta go. <clears throat> That's a talent right there. My dog, That's... My dog, I have headphones on. My dog, I think, hears it. That's awesome. That that was uh, like the was, exact hidden I... talent I was expecting. That's awesome. What was what was the first concert you ever went that's to? That's the way. That's the way I get rid of people on the phone if they won't <laughs> stop calling. I'll just do a high pitch thing, and then they think there's something wrong with the phone, and they hang up. You're letting all your secrets That's out. Awesome. Mike. Well, my kids were little. I just used to hand the phone to the kids, or I'll fuck with them. Like, That's wait, my question. computer has a virus. What kind of virus? Just um, start playing along that, with them. Oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh wait, really? Yeah, I got to do this. Hold on, let me go get my credit card. Hold on one <laughs> second. Wait, hold on. I can't find it. Stay right there. Uh, what was the first concert you ever went to? Um. Well, I the first one that I remember that wasn't like a Christian concert was Harry Belafonte with my parents. That's a that's a good one. Yeah. That was it. Jay, what was your first concert? John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown Band. Better known as nothing when you were Eddie, Eddie and the, the Cruisers. Cruisers. Yes. Um nothing when you were little. Like when I was little I remember I, I, guy. I, think I went to a Beach Boys concert when I was a little kid. Um Well oh, that's your first concert. I, no, but I think it was probably around the same I mean I went to see John Cafferty and the Beaver Brown band when I was like seven so i my first real concert I, like as an adult was smashing pumpkins screaming trees and soul asylum Ooh, nice yep. well my first concert as a, well an adult as a teenager was queen adrena i remember that yeah i was black sabbath and quiet riot nice dan was a barbershop was quartet i was actually no when i was a kid it was my first concert was this guy his name was Peter Lemongello, and he became famous because he like made these like infomercials. He couldn't get a record deal. He sold so his he own album. He created albums. his own label. I remember that. He guy. sold his own album on infomercials, right? I think I saw a documentary on him or like, something. I think it was like he was like he got arrested at one point. I think for arson too. I think, but anyway, <laughs> he had, that was he, my had first he had too many leftover <laughs> CDs what was, or cassettes. What was the what was the worst concert you ever went to? The worst. worst. Probably, that you're embarrassed to say probably, that you went to. Probably like um, some Christian rock concert. I feel like there was a Christian rock band that I was into when I was like 12. <laughs> and I, that I was like really into. And they were like, they were like a small band, you know, from Scotland or something. That's too funny. And I was all excited. But that's kind of embarrassing now, I guess. The, pro, the Proclaimers? <laughs> <laughs> the proclaimers aren't bad. I actually went to what with one of their sons. Okay, it's been great talking to you. <laughs> have, a, have a good day. And I would. That's proclaimers, right? Absolutely. What is? Wait, you you, so you know you know Scotland and all that because you, you know you were lived over there, right? Um, what is what is Haver? If I Haver. If I Haver. Yeah, that Isn't was that the, one of the lyrics. I, I, if I Haver. If I Haver. Haver Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know the words to that song. Apart from the chorus, you know, everyone knows the chorus. But if, I don't know the rest. <laughs> let's say uh, you've maybe seen like, movies like Maybe, movies. Maybe if I have her. I, everything, the, everything is just like slang, crazy, like, I don't know. You know, I, I'm going gonna, gonna to go back and listen to this song after this. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> what was, so, since we're getting, you know, if you somehow, like, you know, in the Tom Hanks big world, you know, like, with that movie Big, and you woke up tomorrow as a dude, what would be the first thing you would do? Actually, the top three things you would do. The top three things. <laughs> well, I would probably, like, jack off, obviously, immediately. <laughs> Just be like, let's see what this feels like. I think that like. goes either way. <laughs> like, wake up as a guy, wake up as a girl. That's yeah, how guys, that's what guys do before they get out of bed in the morning. So, I mean, it only makes sense. Yeah, you just you have to test it out. So, I'd probably <laughs> do that. Ride. 
I probably try to pee, but carefully because that's, you know, you know, uh, guys have, you should have more critics. It's not easy to aim sometimes. I've tried to aim for I, someone and it's not easy. <laughs> my, my advice, my advice is wait till the hard on goes down before you try and pee. Yeah. Well, yeah. That or sure. you do what Dan does and sit down. And then I think that the third thing that I would do, I would, I would want to stick it in something to see what that felt like. So I would immediately like. <laughs> just one thing or you pick a bunch <laughs> of variety of things. She'd line <laughs> things up and she would just sample everything. Like, all right. All right. Let's, let's see. I've heard, I've heard about cantaloupes. I've heard about apple pie from that movie. Uh, uh, hey, Vicky Chase, can you come downstairs <laughs> for a little bit? <laughs> oh, oh, that's too much. Uh, um, if you could be on any reality TV show, what would it be? Oh, well, I don't really watch a lot of reality television. The only thing that I have watched is Beverly uh, Housewives, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I don't know. I would like to just eat popcorn I, in the back. I, I don't want to actually be can on. Can you imagine that. a skin was on that? Can you imagine a skin was on like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? With all those people, and she just comes like walking in. You know, at first I was I was thinking I'm like you know Survivor or whatever. Then I hear Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, and I realized that Survivor would be a really fucking stupid choice. Like that, I, I, if you no, I'm not, not trying good. to eat anything. Or, I don't need to prove my six hundred pound life. <laughs> the Doctor Pimple Popper. Oh, I don't know. I've Joey been... Exotic. <laughs> I, I, the, oh God! Is that a reality show? I, I think it. I think Fire it is. Thing? Yeah. Doctor Pimple Popper is show. everything that's wrong with the world today. It's. It is. It is. No, it's the I'm worst. not into that. No. There's a foot really one now too. I forgot what the foot one's called. What? What's the foot called? There's a, There's a foot one now too. No idea. A foot one. Moving on. I, I don't even want to. Think. It, it doesn't get worse than okay, pimple popper. Yeah, what? no. It's, oh, okay. <laughs> it's called clips for sale. The worst. And, yeah. Worst first date. Worst first date you've ever been on. Worst first date. Hmm. I don't. This might sound surprising, but I don't really date much. How's that but, work? How does how does that work? Like, does it just like kind of like? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of happens. But I mean, I, uh, I mean, I've definitely had like weird. Ex I would say I've just had like weird experiences that ended weird. Okay. But it wasn't really paid. It was more like we were at a party and. It was you hang out and you hang out and you hang out I, until all of a sudden you exclusively hang out. Yeah, exactly. You hang right. out until you're. Ex the, 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 every time that I've tried to have like a date date, it's never really gone. I don't know. It feels too forced. Interesting. All right. And then like, last but not least. I'd rather just. Last but not least. Okay. You have like, you have like one of the better porn names in the, you know, in the business professional names. Um, instead of asking you the stupid question, how you came up with it, because I'm sure you've been asked that 200 million times and nobody really doesn't really matter but you you know the porn name game right like how oh yeah yeah the, so pet if you did that what would yeah the pet the pet your first pet in the street you grew up on um i moved around a lot so i will just pick the first one that i can remember and that would be cinder's concord that's not bad no that's Jay, actually what's not, yours i've done this before oh. and it's so bad <laughs> Misty, Misty Asisqua. Misty Asisqua. Misty Asisqua. I lived on Asisqua Avenue, which was like the, it's an Indian name or whatever, but I all, I can picture like what a Misty Asisqua would look like. And I got to think it's like, like a Canadian border strip club with like, you know, three guys sitting in it and like Misty Asisqua standing on stage. Like it's, it's, it's not a pretty picture. <laughs> In the stage. Misty Asisqua for song two. <laughs> Misty Asisqua for song two. Oh, it's so bad. The best would be, all right, mine, ready? Longfellow Alps. I mean, I think Longfellow, Longfellow. is a fully acceptable name. I think just Longfellow. There yeah. you go. It's very like, Longfellow. you know. Well, no, but the, the dog like, name, 
dog's name was Longfellow. He was part dachshund, part beagle. That was his name. Okay. That's better than Littlefinger. Ugliest dog you've ever seen. <laughs> anyway. I imagine so skin. Longfellow being like a character porn. So like you like you live in the wood. You're a woodsman. You know. You you come out with your axe. That's like your your, your thing. It's kind of that's Dan since we've been quarantined. He's like <laughs> letting it grow out. I know. I actually trimmed it though. I yeah, trimmed this because it was getting. I, I have a haircut. Old. I've shaved. I like. I, I am. I'm treating this quarantine res- respectfully. Yeah, you look very good. Your your quarantine cuts looking good. Yeah, I had to. I had to, I had to save it this morning when I looked at myself in the mirror. So luckily, it you know. <laughs> That's why he's got headphones on. We really don't need them. We can't hear anything coming out of these, but I, I, haircut. I went upstairs last night after having, after getting my haircut and I looked in the mirror and like, I was, uh, it was, it was terrifying. The look, like my kids were watching my wife as she like cut my hair and she did that thing like right to the side chunk of it. And they were just like, you know, like when they, you get that, like kids get that look on their face, like, Oh my God, dad's angry. Like, you know, run away. <laughs> It was, yeah, luckily it was savable, but. Anyway, so Skin, enough about Jay's hair. Yeah. Remind everybody where they can find you online. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Skin underscore Diamond, as well as Instagram, Rejoy Cats. And uh, OnlyFans, you can also find me at Skin Diamond. There will also be a Patreon coming soon, which will be including this whole Goddess Anana project, which is a whole other thing which is um, coming soon, but yeah. That's awesome. And, and of course, as soon as we get back online and the, and the world begins spinning again, you can also find Skin at every Exotica this year, every Exotica Expo. So that's going to be awesome. I'm excited. Right. Honestly, the timing has been a, a little... Uh, we and, have more time and, to prepare. The, it's going to be really... And the billboards, the billboards look badass with you on it. They do. Oh, mm-hmm. shit. I can't wait to see. Yeah. It's going to be cool. For sure. Well, Skin, thank you very, very, very much for taking thank time you. out of your busy, of your busy schedule of snake wrangling <laughs> and uh, chilling out. Yeah. Thanks for well, smoking up. Thanks for smoking up with us. Next, next time we're <laughs> coming, we'll we're, we're coming back and we're going to test out all of the uh, the whips and the uh, everything that we see dangling in the background. Oh, yes, this one's Jay, really Jay, Jay, Jay wants to be a sub. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll bring this one to Exotica. How about that? There you go. Make sure you whip Jack. I'll hit Dan with it. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, that wraps us, I guess, for this episode of Exotica TV for Jay and Dan. And thank you so much to Skin Diamond for, for sharing the, the hour with us. We could go on forever like this shit. So maybe I'll see we'll, you tomorrow we'll be, on, uh, yeah, tomorrow on the happy hour. Happy hour ish. Uh, our special happy hour ish, because we don't know how long it's going to be. With uh, We'll be live with. Uh, Jesus, who's on tomorrow? Lexi Bell, Kenzie oh, Reeves, and, uh, <laughs> and a little musical guest of uh, James McGill from Lifespeed. So. General debauchery. We, we will be cheersing and drinking, drunken. and I'll be clicking buttons on the computer. So it's, it, it's always a good time. Good time. All right, All right guys. Catch you tomorrow. Take care. Peace.